The first module in the EKG series will be on how to perform an EKG. This is a skill every medical student should master before graduation, so hopefully by the end of this, you'll be able to put a patient on the cardiac monitor and perform a 12-lead EKG. The first distinction we should make is between the electrodes and leads. This is an electrode and this is a lead. Electrodes are the actual physical cables and sticky gel pads that you put on a patient. A lead is a tracing of the electrical current of a patient's cardiac activity. Unfortunately, most of us, myself included, will commonly refer to the electrodes as leads, such as when we say, hey, I think one of the leads fell off the patient. What we really mean is that one of the wires came unattached. Technically, you can't point to any cable on the EKG machine and say, this is lead 2. The lead is a picture on the EKG graph paper. The next distinction we should make is between cardiac monitoring and an EKG. Cardiac monitoring is meant to give you a continuous reading on a patient's cardiac rhythm. An EKG shows you only a few seconds of cardiac activity, though in greater detail. Cardiac monitor is useful in patients in whom you think their cardiac activity may change. For example, a patient presenting with chest pain may deteriorate from a normal sinus rhythm into ventricular tachycardia, and you can see this on the monitor. EKGs are useful for getting a more detailed picture of the heart's activity. The cable for the cardiac monitor has five electrodes, and the cable for the EKG has ten electrodes. The EKG tracing has 12 leads. Let's zoom out and take a better look at this. The 12 leads of the EKG are labeled here. 1, 2, 3, AVR, AVL, AVF, V1, V2, and V3. V4, V5, and V6. These tracings here are what we call a rhythm strip. This is just V1 again, except for a much longer time. And this is just V2 again, except for a much longer time. As you can see, there are 12 leads here. These leads we're going to call the limb leads. And then these leads, we call the precordial leads. This will make a little bit more sense in just a little bit. So where do all the electrodes go? Well, let's take a look. First, let's start with the cardiac monitor. There are five wires for the cardiac monitor cable. In the United States, they're colored like this, white, black, brown, green, and red. But they're placed in the same area despite whatever the colors they are. The right arm one goes on the right shoulder, the left arm goes on the left shoulder, the brown one goes on the chest and acts as a ground, the right leg one goes at about the right groin, the left one on the left groin. For cardiac monitoring, you put the electrodes on the torso. For EKGs, the electrodes are going to be placed at the ends of the limbs. Remember that the electrodes for the cardiac monitor are left on the patient the entire time that they are in the emergency department. Imagine having wires tying down your arms and legs. Every time you went to scratch your nose, you'd be swinging wires around. Not fun. For this reason, the electrodes are often placed on the torso. So why aren't the electrodes for the EKG placed on the torso? Well, historically, the EKGs were recorded by placing the electrodes on a patient's limbs. So, to keep tracings consistent, we continue that tradition. Placing the EKG leads on the torso would make the waveforms look different. So where do the electrodes go for the EKG? Let's take a look. There are four limb electrodes. There's the right arm, and the left arm, right leg and left leg. The right arm electrode goes 
on the right arm avoiding any thick muscle. The left arm one goes in about the same position except on the left arm. The left leg goes just lateral to the calf muscle and the right leg goes lateral to the calf muscle on the right leg. These are the four limb electrodes. There are also six precordial electrodes. V1 goes in the fourth intercostal space between ribs 4 and 5, just to the right of the sternum. V2 goes in the fourth intercostal space, but just to the left of the sternum. V4 goes in the fifth intercostal space in the midclavicular line. V3 goes in a line in between both V3 and V4, right in the middle. V5 stays in the 5th intercostal space, but on the anterior axillary line, and V6 also stays in that 5th intercostal space, but on the mid-axillary line. In female patients, don't place the electrodes on top of the breast unless you can't gain access to the normal position. If you do have to move it onto breast tissue, write it on the recording. Some would say that breast tissue makes no difference on the recording and that it is more important to get anatomical placement of the electrodes. In certain circumstances, you would need to use special electrodes to look at different parts of the heart, namely the back or posterior portion and the right side. You only have 10 wires, so in order to get these extra views, you'll have to move these wires into new positions. The EKG machine doesn't know you're doing this, so it's going to label the tracings on the EKG as if no electrodes have been moved. So you need to be sure to label your EKG with the names of the new leads. Right-sided electrodes would go in the corresponding position that V3 through V6 do, except on the right side instead of the left. This is useful in diagnosing myocardial infarctions on the right side of the heart. V1 goes in the exact same place as you had before, and so does V2. V3 is placed in the same spot you had on the left, but this time on the right. V4 is placed in the fifth intercostal space, midclavicular line, this time on the right. You could leave V5 and V6 on the left side, or you could move them to the right. Now remember that V3 and V4 are moved over, but the EKG machine doesn't know that. So on the paper, cross out V3 and cross out V4 and write V3R and V4R, for example. I'll cross that out and write V3R. I'll cross that out, V4R. Now let's look at the posterior leads. Posterior electrodes wrap around the back, continuing where V6 left off. These are used in diagnosing posterior MIs. Place V7 in line with V6, but along the posterior axillary line. V8 is in the same horizontal line, but this time at the tip of the scapula. And V9 is in the same horizontal line, but just to the left of the spine. And that's it. That's the end of Module 1. Your assignment for this module is to place a patient of yours on the cardiac monitor, print a rhythm strip, flip it over, write your name on it, and put one of the patient's stickers on the back. Then have someone, either the nurse, the doctor, or the tech, sign it, and then turn that in to me. The second part of the assignment is to obtain an EKG on one of your patients. Print out two copies. Keep one with the patient chart, but the other one, flip that over and write your name on the back. And again, have either a nurse, doc, or tech sign that and turn that in to me as well. And that's it. Have fun and remember to email me if you have any questions.